Hey guys, it's Norm from Tested. I'm here with Jim Price. We are in your home, in your garage, but it's not an ordinary garage because behind us, it looks like an airplane. What is this behind us? Boeing 737, built in 1968 or 69. It cycled out in 1987 and uh, was gonna be scrapped. And so I decided to save her and uh, cut her off at the section that I wanted and had them trucked it, trucked it out here and uh, began my project with the 737 simulator. So that's what this is. It's not just the cockpit and the fuselage of a 737. It is a real working flight simulator that you have, that you've built out in your garage. Yes, yes. 90% of the systems are working. We've all been uh, custom programmed by me and my friend Matt Ford. And uh, we have an instructor station for engine failures and fires and all kinds of different scenarios. And every system in the overhead panel and the, the instrument panel, all those work the way they're supposed to in the real airplane. Oh my goodness. So take me back to the very beginning. So Jim, by trade, you're an air traffic controller. You live and breathe airplanes, right? Pretty much, yeah. And are you your pilot also? I'm a pilot as well, yes. I own my own uh, Piper Arrow. And um, I started flying in 1980, and I picked up the flight simulator hobby in 1994 when I was getting my instrument rating. Yeah, so it's computer monitors, and you, you've built like flight simulators before. Before you started this project, you just had one out of wood, right? Correct. It started in the corner of my office, and it was a single seater. I put in a wood overhead panel with the, the real overhead panel insert. And uh, after a while, I decided, well, I may as well go full bore. I wanted a two seater, the real size, and the whole nine yards. So, in the same room, I built a complete substructure, overhead panels, the whole thing. So, it was the actual same size as a real cockpit, turned it into a full cockpit. So how did this opportunity come up to actually get a real 737 and build a simulator in that? Well, Matt Ford was the first one to actually buy one. He found, he lives in Dallas or lived in Dallas at the time, and he knew of a wrecking yard up in Ardmore, Oklahoma. And he and his brother were flying over there one day, um, and they saw all these carcasses of 737 sitting on the ground. So he went and inquired, and he actually bought one on the spot the sister ship to this one. And uh, it's actually a little bit smaller than mine. His was already cut. Um, but he's the one that turned me on to it, and then I got excited about it. And then in the June of 2000, I decided to buy my own. Wow, so it's 12 years in the, as, as a project, and you're not finished yet. You said you're gonna paint it, and but. Yeah, I wanna finish her up. I wanna paint it. I'm gonna put the Boeing uh, Dreamliner paint scheme on it, hopefully. Oh. I'm not sure how it's gonna work with just the cockpit section. Um, and then I want to completely redo the visual system for the outside. I've concentrated for years on the inside of the cockpit to get everything working. And that's finally at a point where I think it's pretty good. So now it's time to enhance the outside. Yeah, let's talk about the inside of the cockpit. So you buy the frame, you buy the nose of a plane, and that's cool to look at, but on the inside you have all the instrument panels. Like, How do you go about buying the same instrument panels that go into real planes? They're all uh, retired planes that these parts are laying around and they either can't be put back in a plane again be for safety reasons or um, they just want to get rid of them. So once in a while a lucky hobbyist like me can, can actually get in and get a good deal because normally they're very, very expensive. Our gyms, we've talked a lot about the construction, the instrumentation, the systems of this 737 simulator. Uh, let's go inside the cockpit and actually take a look at those systems. Fantastic. Okay, Jim, we're in the cockpit. This looks like it's what I know a 737 looks like. I, I am absolutely blown away. This is not at all what I was expecting, even after seeing the pictures. Thank you. This is awesome. <laughs> this is really amazing. How much of the stuff is original from, from, uh, from an actual plane? How much is it like aftermarket kit stuff for uh, cockpit enthusiasts? How much is stuff that you came up with yourself? Uh, it's not real simple to answer. I could point out what's real and what's yeah, let, not. Yeah, let's let's give some examples. So, so obviously, obviously control wheels, okay. control columns. This is the real 737 200 throttle pedestal. Okay. These are your throttles, just like a boat. Okay. You can see exactly the, like a boat you can see the engine you know. power actually coming up as I push them forward. <laughs> so all of these are actual real components, uh, radio heads, intercom system, trim panels. This is the uh, unlock the, the door in the back and stab trim and stuff. Okay. Transponder, which actually beams your discrete beacon code to oh, ATC. So that, that so they tells, can... tells you where we are exactly. when you're at work. Right. Okay. And you can change that simply by... They'll tell you to squawk a certain number. They call it squawking. 
Okay. And you, you type it in there, and now they know where you are and who so, you are. So when you're flying the plane, do you have other friends that, that sim their traffic control side? And there is a whole online community where you can do a full-on <laughs> ATC flight from just about any point in the world. Oh, that's amazing. It's, it, it is amazing. Yeah. Some, some people like to do the controlling side of it. Some people do the flying. And you can actually see them. If you're at an airport, you can hear them. Mm -hmm. and see them taxiing around. It's all linked together via the internet. Oh, that's amazing. It's, it's that's, crazy. And, and so the software you're running is X-Plane. That's the, that's the core sim software for the whole project. X-Plane 10, yes. Okay. Uh, and I, I think you said you earlier started with Flight Simulator, but X-Plane seems like it's more conducive to the hardcore. I used simulator. Flight Simulator, Microsoft Flight Simulator, for years and years and years. And it was really great for, for what it did. Uh, I, I switched to X-Plane because I think the flight dynamics are much more realistic. Okay. So, so when you take a, a piece of actual equipment that came from a plane, you, obviously the electronics behind the switches aren't the original electronics. Right. Explain a little bit about how you're connecting all this stuff into the machine, and, and how did you figure out how to... I, I mean, all this stuff is wired up, right? It is. It is. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> so you pull the panels out and just do a ton of soldering? A ton of soldering. Basically, what you're looking for is you want the f the front, the uh, the face. That's the main important part because okay. you get the real feel of the real switches, the lights, and all that behind it. Uh, with my setup with the Epic card, mm -hmm. uh, it's basically a matrix setup: eight eight uh, switches per um, line. Okay. And uh, my friend Ted Deller has actually made circuit boards where you can wire into the circuit boards and it'll plug in via ribbon cable to the Epic card. Okay. And so you just recognize the switch change, right? And then in the software, it sees that and you tell it what you want it to do. So, so first you have to wire up all the panels. And then I assume you're going to sit in here flipping switches and you're going to say what that switch is. And somebody on the other side of the computer is going to say, hey, okay, we'll make that one. Here's what you, if you want to turn on the landing light. Yeah. You see this switch go clink, clink on off. And you, you tell, you send a command to flight simulator turn on your landing that's light. the landing light and okay it seems really straightforward but that it's, way it's straightforward but the, the logic and getting them to work like the real system that's where the the challenge is and and i assume that this is way more work than you did by yourself when you when you pulled all these panels out and wired them up did you were you just sitting soldering for months and months and months on end or i had a lot of help okay my friends matt ford ted deller matt wheatless back they all have their own projects we've kind of form this tight knit little group and we fly t to each other's locations and we'll sit there for a whole weekend and solder panels and drink beer and then we <laughs> hopefully by the time we have to leave we'll get an hour to fly. Oh that's fantastic. <laughs> so we spend the entire time on the bench or underneath the cockpit or you know and so to do this entire thing myself I would still be working on it probably only be 25 percent done. And and right now so every Virtually everything we're looking at here, including some of the stuff, there's stuff behind me too. Well, circuit breaker panels are all real. All wired in, wired into the sim. How, how does that interact with the sim? Like how many computers do you have running all this stuff? I think I have five or six computers <laughs> now. I've lost track. Each one has their own specialty. Like mm -hmm. one computer runs this whole display system across the front. Okay. Um, which is one of the parts that isn't out of the real aircraft. These are actually just LCDs behind these panels. These are the real bezels out of the airplane, but okay. everything behind it is not. Well, I have to assume that the glass, the glass panels in modern planes haven't been cycled, cycled through enough to, to, to wind up in scrapyards yet. Not right? only that, but they're very, very difficult to interface, to talk okay. to. They require special power and, and inputs and all kinds of different things. And then all the display, the, the navigation and the engine displays, all that's written by Mark Hastings with Sim Avionics. He's got the complete custom suite he does all the autopilot stuff the flight management system everything so what isn't wired up you show, show me what the, show isn't me, wired up show me the thing that doesn't work <laughs> I, I i'm looking everywhere i look that's gonna be tough because you know a lot of fire bells oh, and that's <laughs> that's scary you need a drink from the back uh, hey norm uh, i'd like a gin and tonic please <laughs> this is this is probably the only uh, 737 you can fly and have cocktails at the that's same right. time that's right okay and I, your landings get better no cup holders though jim well i, I take it back There's there a cup are cup holder holders down here on the right that's that fantastic. one of the first things that went in <laughs> <laughs> um so explain to me how the how you're simming the navigation stuff so 
Mark Hastings software is doing the actual logic, the, the, the ground tracking, the turning, the autopilot systems, as far as automatically climbing, descending, turning. He does all that in his software, and then there's another a plugin for X-Plane. It's called XPUIPC, and it's written by Torsten Spearing in Germany. So that allows us to send data and receive data back from X-Plane, and that's kind of the link with the software. So you have navigation software that ties into sim GPS that tracks your simulated position that then fires that back into the, the, the plane simulator to tell you where you are, and then that talks to the autopilot so the autopilot can get you where you're going. Right, it all ties That's together. bananas. This is absolutely bananas. And, and it seems like dozens of people have contributed different pieces to the, to the software that you all right, share right. for your different projects, yep. which is amazing. It is. And without that, it, it wouldn't be possible. I mean, there's no way, I don't think, that one person could sit down and do the whole thing. Is there a real black box? It's red. It's red, Well, okay. orange, actually, but uh, not in this one. Not in this one. You, <laughs> no. No, no need, I, I guess. I did have it set up with a taping system as well as some cameras, so if someone came to fly, I could send them home with a VHS tape. At this time, I, that hasn't been reconnected. So let's talk a little bit about um, the screens and stuff, because you said you've spent hours and hundreds and thousands of hours building the cockpit out and haven't really focused so much on the outside but this looks great to me well you're right i've spent my entire life practically making it real in here um, because a lot of times actually when i'm flying i'm in the clouds you don't really see anything uh, but the screens uh, outside they're just regular pull down screens i've got three 1024 by 768 projectors so it's all projection system okay um I want to eventually upgrade the projectors and I also want to do a complete curved Build screen so you don't get the gaps in the middle and everything. And I need to add two more computers to get the correct angles on the side. Because <laughs> right now on the sides it's kind of stretched just by the way it virtually the way it sets up. So I still have a lot of work to do out there and it can look a lot, lot better. So how mobile is this? Is this something that you can, it seems like it's a pretty big undertaking if you wanted to move it. Huge. Say, okay. Huge. Yes. Trucks and forklifts and cutting holes in the side of the garage. Flatbed and trucks and you're pulling out the garage door and the header and yeah, there's quite a bit involved. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, Jim, thank you so much for showing us around your cockpit. This is um, absolutely amazing. You're welcome. I, 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 unlike anything I ever expected to see, um, you have a website that we should definitely talk about. Yes, uh, 737synguy.com. Okay. It's they, a little bit outdated, but uh, I need to work on that. People want to learn more, then they can go there and find out. You've documented the entire project, more or well, less? more or less. <laughs> well, it's a big project, so a lot of documentation. And another good spot is uh, cockpitbuilders.com. Okay. It's all people doing the same sort of thing and a great place to learn and get ideas and share ideas. Fantastic. Um, we'll be back real soon. You're going to take us on a flight. And uh, until then, uh, I'm Will from Tested. See you guys later.